One of the really new and exciting changes in Cinema 4D R25 is the ability to import vectors. Um, before there was a kind of a complicated process of doing it, you'd have to, in Illustrator, save your files down as an older version, Illustrator 8, and then uh, you know, if you wanted to extrude the um, the splines, you would have to pick the extrude, um, bring the objects, those uh, the vector files in, and, and bring them in under here. Uh, the process now is is a lot simpler. There's there's something called let me find it here. It is vector import, which will let you do that. Um, I mean, I'll show you the way that I'll bring in a, a color logo and um, show you how much faster and easier this is. Uh, I'm just going to go up to File Merge Objects. And from here, I'm going to pick a logo. In this case, it's a color logo. It's an Illustrator file, and it's the, the latest uh, CC version. Uh, I can just bring it in sort of using the standard uh, settings. And now you see my logo, um, which is a color logo. It's actually come in. It's already been extruded, and it's retained the colors, which is really nice. Um, So uh, if I want to uh, do things like make this extrusion a little bit thicker, I can just go down into here uh, and s change the extrude depth. We can change the caps on here and slightly bevel them. Or you, know, you can see that edge has been softened a little bit. Um, and you can play around with that. So all these settings, it's already ready to go. Um, and then the other thing I'll show is, you know, this is this is fine if we don't want to really animate parts of the logo. But if I want to access each of these letters or these splines separately, uh, what I can do is click on uh, this object, and I'll go um, into the object uh, tab right here and make sure I click hierarchy, and that's going to let me open this up and see uh, all the different parts of it. So, uh, for example. Uh, you can see that when I select something, it highlights it. So this is two. Uh, you can see this O is highlighted. So, and I think they're probably just going to come in the order that it was created. So this one is, whoops, this one is G. This one's going to be O. And this is L. Okay, so that's, that's a way for me to access those things uh, separately. And then the good thing about that is if I wanted to, let's say, um, tweak these like I wanted the two to be not quite as uh, long or deep. I could do that. Uh, I could, we could also undo that. Um, we could animate these things separately. So maybe I wanted, if I want to move this around, I'm just going to back out. I can, whoops, I can move it. Uh, what you saw that just happened was, I guess this button was clicked. So this was enabling the access. Uh, this is the axis, and when it's on, it lets me move the axis, and when it's when only the object is selected or model, um, it moves the whole model. Now that's important because right now, let me undo that. Uh, you can see that the axis is is off of the the model, and if I wanted it to rotate or something, let's see, it's going to rotate from the center point here. So, uh, real quick, the way that I can adjust that is enable uh, axis and from there, I can move this over. I'm looking at the four views here because I want to make sure it's uh, in the right place. You know, so now it's going to rotate around this point. Um, and yeah, we can go ahead and um, <clears throat> yeah, we could maybe keyframe it. So maybe we wanted to rotate in. Um, I'll go up to the coordinates and. Uh, let's see, that rotation is, is in the x-axis. So I'm going to keyframe it by just clicking here. That should turn it on. And maybe over here, maybe I'll set it to 90 or something like that. Um, <clears throat> or maybe I'll do negative 90. And I want to make sure I click on this to turn the keyframe on. Uh, Cinema 4D does not automatically uh, register your keyframes as you move them. This is my timeline. I can move them closer together if I need to. Uh, but there, we, if we wanted to just kind of swing them together, that's what that would look like. Um, okay, so that's that's one example of uh, using 
this new ability to import splines from Illustrator. Uh, I wanted to show one or a few other things with this. Here I am with the original uh, Illustrator file, and you can see that th these are the uh, the letters, and they're they're solid, they're filled in. Uh, what I want to do is reverse this so that I'm using strokes instead of fills. Um, I guess I just need to select them individually, and I'll, I'm just hitting Shift Shift X to reverse the fill and the stroke. Okay, so let me save this as a separate file and then bring this into Cinema 4D. Okay, so I'm back in Cinema 4D. I'm gonna open up a new file and I'm gonna bring in that new file that I created. Uh, it's with a stroke. So you can see here, the effect now is different. Instead of doing an extrusion, and I think uh, when there's a fill, it wants to extrude it out, like create depth out of it. Uh, it's doing something right now where it's, it is it is adding depth to it, but what it's doing, it's, uh, it's doing like a sweep of the spline, so it's actually kind of like making a thin line around it. Uh, and we can, let's back out and look at this. Uh, again, it's retaining the color. Let's go up to, um, the object and down here you can see the sweep stroke option sometimes it's open or closed and what we can do is start to add depth to it so we could make this you know have even more depth uh, I think it has it had a width to it which was already at 100 uh, we can round it a little bit more the other nice thing about sweep nerves is that you can kind of do this growth effect where it will grow on kind of right on. Um, again, if we want to access these individually, we could hit hierarchy. And from within here, um, we, we can access things separately. And you can see that it brought in these uh, spline, these sweep nerves. Um, so in the previous example, we had uh, extrusions, and these are slightly different. If you wanted to manually uh, draw these on, you could do that. So you could access spline by spline if you wanted to do them sequentially. Uh, and have more control over that. Again, keyframing it by pressing the button. Um, uh, maybe we'll just do that first letter just to show you. So we'll start it at zero, keyframe that, and run it to 100. And when we, when we play that back, you can just see it's animating that on. All right, um, so one last thing I wanna show, I'm gonna go back to this other example. Um, so right now, these, these colors, if I rendered it, they would render, I'm just doing a preview uh, as they are, but uh, they're not actually materials. Like if I went up in, uh, in this menu, if I wanna look at what materials I have, um, you can see there are no materials in this. And actually, maybe I'll go to a material editor in case I wanna make new ones. Um, these are the ways that I could do it. Uh, let me close that for right now. So. Um, what is what is the issue? If we go into each of these splines or each of these extrude um, objects, you'll see that the color is um, set in the basic panel. So it's it's right here. So that's where the color is coming from. But again, we don't have these as materials. If I wanted to save a material and use it on another object, or if I wanted to um, go into more depth and make a material that has like reflection or or roughness or something else, I can't really do it with what I have right now. So one way around it, and maybe they'll make things um, easier as you go along, is to make a new material. So I'm in the material manager. Um, what we can do is, you know, I think what you, let's, let's uh, make the material for the two. Um, so I don't need that, but uh, you could go into here and you could, find the hex codes here. So that's one way to do it. You could take this and copy and paste it uh, and put it into this new material for color. Um, we should be able to, again, these are the different menus. Uh, so you could put in the color this way, copy and paste it. Um, and again, we, now we have this reflectance if we wanted to add that on or uh, luminance or transparency, bump, things like that, we can add that. Uh, Another thing you could do is use the color dropper. Um, let's see, you could use the color dropper like this. Oh, 
I need, it looks like I need to um, allow the permissions on my computer, but you could color drop uh, this if you needed to. Um, for me, maybe copy and pasting is, I guess, is the way that I would do it. Um, uh, again, this is, at least this way we have this material. Um, so to show you, let's say I liked that color and I wanted to put it on another sphere. Um, now I can take it and match the color. There it goes. And if you wanted to apply this color onto that too, you could drag it on and, and put it there and that's gonna override it. Uh, like if I put it onto the O, you should see that's overriding whatever color is coming in through here. So this is the way that I could build materials out of this and uh, if I needed th to access them uh, and change them. So hopefully that's helpful for you and uh, this shows you like a really powerful and easy way to just bring in splines from Illustrator into uh, Cinema 4D and you can create 3D um, out of those splines either doing extrusion or doing a sweep depending on if you're using fills or uh, strokes in your file. So I'm really excited about this, I hope you are too.